Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is a travesty playing some Neverwinter Nights 2 using the Return of the Exile mod. Alright, well, we got two of the three tasks completed, and we're now back up here by this barrier thing so we can get into the uh, Conservatory of Souls. So let's see what's going to happen as we talk to this thing now. The Guardian's voice echoes from within. The tasks have been completed. A brave hero stands before me. You have earned the right to enter. Somehow you have a feeling that the Guardian is not really excited by the prospect of a mortal entering the conservatory. But the gods created him as the most lawful being. He doesn't want you in, but he has to let you, for the tasks are complete. Alright, here we are getting back into the end game here. Make a step and pass the barrier. You step through the barrier and you find yourself in a place that doesn't look like what you were seeing from the other side. You are in an immense structure made of marble. The walls rise up to the sky and corridors expand to the horizon. An illusion or reality you cannot say. Looking back you see your companion standing outside still as if time stopped for them. You are alone here. Only you have business in the building. You start walking down the corridor when the Guardian's voice echoes again, this time through the marble, louder. It feels like thunder. You cannot see who is talking, but it feels like he's an omnipresence here. Centuries have come and gone since I had a visitor. You have proven yourself worthy of entering, and what you desire from me I will grant. The gods made the rules, and I enforce them. The souls in here are to be protected until the worthy mortal is allowed entrance. Then that mortal can have one request. Tell me, what do you wish of the conservatory? I need my soul. A wave of colors engulfs you like a typhoon. You feel a soft wind rising which slowly lifts you up. Before you have a chance to understand what is going on, you are floating inside the building traveling to where the Guardian is taking you. The wind retreats and you land back on the ground. You observe your surroundings and you are in a room of colors. It feels unreal. Dazzling lights float all around. They seem to be next to you, but if you try to reach them, it is impossible. Moments pass and you realize that all these lights and colors are souls. Powerful souls the gods felt the need to store in here. Souls which couldn't just wither and die. Souls with great importance to the multiverse. Your soul is among them. Just say the words and I will merge it back into your flesh. This will cause the revelations about your origin. Everything that has been hiding in your subconscious will come out and become one with your soul. Your whole being and purpose will be redefined. Oh, here we have now all these choices we were offered. <laughs> Take your soul and with its power destroy the conservatory. Deny your soul. Challenge the guardian. Take your soul and with its power harness all the rest. <laughs> Take your soul and get out. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to take my father's advice and just take our soul and get out of here. <laughs> Let's do that one. You ask the guardian for your soul and the colors around the room whirl and twist while most of them rapidly escape through the walls. After some minutes, the last ones escape the room, but one remains. It slowly approaches you. When it finally reaches your body, it engulfs you, and it steadily merges with you. You can feel it. It is your soul merging with your experiences in life. It is your fate, and what you were meant to be, becoming one with who you are now. You are in a state of ecstasy. With your eyes closed, you have succumbed yourself to the experience. There is no pain, just euphoria. Your inner self has been longing for this moment for so long. Then comes a great flash of light and an instant stabbing pain in your brain. Some kind of cutscene here. You return. My spies and spells tell me that the forces of Helandrith became more and more with each day passing. We can beat them in open combat. Of that I am certain. For every one of their troops that fall, I can raise one for our side. However, my eyes across the multiverse report that the gods observe the situation closely. Do you think we can expect divine intervention? 
I think that is a possibility, my lord, yes. The past has shown that whenever cataclysmic events happen on any material plane, the gods decide to act. Ironically, it is during such events that most of them got their divine powers granted, same as we plan. In any case, if gods decide to act, we will have to fight on two fronts, the people of Helandrith and the godly soldiers. We might be looking at defeat. If a godly messenger decides to fight this war, you can be certain of two things. One, he will come to fight you, and you only. Our troops won't interest him. And secondly, the gods will most probably decide not to kill you. You will face imprisonment. Can they be so naive? If I were facing me, I... My lord Victicane, imprisonment in our outer plane is just as good as death in their eyes. There are gods inside Carceri, or other extra planar prisons, who are locked in these since the dawn of time. Don't lecture me on the plains, Volnik. I know. Our biggest ally lives in Carceri. If I were to be locked in there, though, I can see no easy way out. On that, I agree with you. That's why I ask you to make haste in our... in case of defeat plan. I can see this working. See, if we win this war, I become the new Lich God. If we lose, we just have to wait for our second chance. Say we lose the war, how would you rate the chances of success on our second plan? My lord, the spells we used are ancient and powerful. The subject will be what we want it to be. We want to give it more time, though. The more it stays under our influence, the bigger the chances of success. I can't thank you enough for this, Volnik. I needed a subject from someone I can trust, and you provided me with just that. I am continuously proving to you that I am your most loyal servant. It was only natural to provide my own offspring for this plan, and my wife was against it, but she will be fighting for us soon once you raise her. Oh, this is how we all began. I have to say that despite all the books I've read and all the planes I traveled, you provided me something which I had never heard. When you told me that we can extract the soul of your offspring in order to program it the way we want it, so that even if I am imprisoned, he can help me escape, I thought you were crazy. But here we are, setting a flawless plan in motion. You give me too much credit, Victicane. I choose to master the arts and mysteries of the soul, any soul. You see, when a mortal is born, the soul contains little information. Some fate and destiny is written in it, but not much. While the person lives a life, though, this information keeps getting written until the day he or she dies. So I thought, we could extract a soul and program it as if we feel like, then reattach it to the body when all the information we want is written in it. Things like loyalty to you and belief in your cause. The lore says that the person has to be close to the one performing the ritual. Therefore, I provided my boy. Simple as that. Yes, simple as that. But you see, I don't achieve all this greatness because I made hasty choices. What worries me still is the side effects you mentioned. If the boy never gets a chance to live a life before we introduce a soul back to the body, you have nothing to worry about. It's only when the person gets to live a life without a soul that our plan can be flawed. As we talked another time, soul extraction is a complicated process. Some essence remains in the body. This essence also contains information about the person. So if the person could somehow live a life without the soul, they could start building their own beliefs. Then, when the extracted soul is introduced back into the body, it would be a struggle about which part prevails. But this is no problem for us. We will reattach the soul back to the body once we are ready. Then send my boy to an outer plane in order to wait. If and only if you get imprisoned, he will return to save you. We have talked about this plan so often. Even though I understand all the technicalities, there's a constant uncertainty in the back of my head. Let's hope I'm wrong. Or even better, let's hope we win the war. That is always priority one. Thank you for coming today. 
Let me prepare. I'll see you and our troops soon. Then we march to Cordur. Some days later, same location. The rest of the building is on fire! We need to get out of here now! We have orders to destroy all books and apparatus the Lich had in the tower. We cannot leave until we do so. Listen to me. The tower is in flames. We will die if we stay here. Books. They will burn in the fire. Oh, this is how Victor Kane loses, huh? The fire is reaching the floor. It's either now or never. The fire rages on the building. You cannot see more, but can hear the beams cracking. Somehow, you feel a falling sensation. A lab jar, a container, and then a splash. Floating somewhere. It has to be water. Days pass when you hear the sound of waves crashing on some coast. You start seeing again. Fade images. They come and go fast. The container breaks, and the inside spread on some rocks. It's cold. You can feel it. A bright light appears and an entity descends from the sky. It all goes dark again. You manage to catch some more glimpses. Your body wants to wake up in the conservatory, but you hold it back. The entity flies back towards the sky with all that was inside. The now broken lab jar. All but a baby. The baby stays back upon the rocks as the winter comes and snow starts to fall. The snow covers the baby, and it all goes dark again. You cannot hold it anymore. You can feel your body going into seizures. You open your eyes, and the pain and seizures go away. Just you standing in the conservatory, complete, reunited with your soul, knowing the truth about your origins. Now you know why Marvin wanted you dead. Now you know why the current Lich God contracted the Syndicate to chase you down. They just thought that you would help Victicane, that his plan, which he set in motion together with your father 500 years ago, will be successful. Now you stand in the conservatory. The colors are gone, but you feel their presence in the building. Thank you for your service. Maybe we'll meet again in the future. As soon as you stop talking, the colors start filling the room once again. You are, though, floating away from them, towards the corridor where you were when you first entered. The voice of the Guardian comes to you, as if it whispers right into your ear. I wish we won't have to meet again. You have no reason to come back to this place. There's a moment of disorientation, and then you stand outside. Your companion's still there, as if nothing ever happened. For them, only a single second passed. You're back! There was a moment I expected the worse. So glad to see you standing next to me again. Explain to them what you saw. I learned about my past. Your companions stare at you as you tell them the story of your origins. There are many emotions in their faces. Horror, sympathy, disbelief. Once you are done, there is a moment of silence as they let the information sink in. Then some decide to talk. The way I see it, you have two options now. Either travel back to Holandrith and leave all this behind, or travel to Carceri to confront Victicane. Seeing Victicane, you knew all along the way that such a moment might come, but that was before you found out about the influence he had on you. The Lich could control your dreams directly. He gave you visions, even if your soul was stored out of your body. He clearly is connected to you. There's no telling what will happen if you meet him in Carceri. Now your character is set. Depending on how you morphed yourself through your travels, one word or a spell from him could cause you to help him free himself. On the other hand, if you morphed your character not to his image, then traveling to Carceri might be your only chance to kill him and end the link between you once and for all. I think we need to portal to Carceri. Some of your companions frown as they don't want to travel to Carceri, but at the same time, they don't want to let you go on your own. They are not happy, but they will follow you to the end. Some others cheer as their thirst to see the Lich dead is equal to yours. You feel God's eyes on you. You sense a presence about you, watching, listening. It is clear that some gods share your ambition. 
Your plan to kill Victor Kane once and for all is going to benefit the whole multiverse. A portal starts forming in front of you. The air becomes even more stale, and a bitter sulfur taste fills your mouth and nostrils. Chains and moans echo through the now completely formed portal. It is clear someone in the multiverse wants you to go to Karsiri. The way back is impossible. No one escapes the prison plane, but you have proven in your journey that you are capable of anything if you put your mind to it. Hmm. Portal to Karsiri. Let's see. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to be able to rest in there. Let's go see what's going to happen. Yeah, we're starting to lose some of our uh, buffs. You know what? Let's use that rod of resting. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this all off camera. I'm going to buff up. We're probably going to be fighting Victor Kane or something through here, so I want to be ready. I'll be right back. Alright, I managed to use the rod of resting on all of us, so I rested up the entire party. I'm not going to buff up yet, just in case we lose all our buffs when we go through this, so let's go see what's going to happen. Step through the portal to the prison plane. There will be no turning back. If you have unfinished business in the material plane or anywhere else, now is the time to finish them. Let's travel to Carceri. You arrive to a place colder than anything you've ever experienced. The temperature creeps into your body slowly but steadily. The floor is covered with ice. The only feature that stands out is an immense obelisk in the middle of the room and some sources of power scattered across the platforms. Bodies cover the entrance. Adventurers are unlucky souls who stumble in a wrong portal. So that's the prison of the Lich. I must say it looks like I imagined it. Cold and miserable. Ilona, I cannot feel your presence here. Please give me strength. Hear my prayers. If only we could talk to him. Imagine the knowledge we could harness. Her eyes glisten. She stands still for a moment and then shakes her head. Why is it always like that? Knowledge brings insanity and self-destruction. Such a shame. Rao, I know I haven't been your best follower lately. However, if there was any time I needed your help, it's now. Give me strength to prevail in this dark and cold place. Your companions might be afraid, but they are ready. They've been through a lot during your travels, as if preparing for this moment. You've all stood by my side, and when I needed it the most, besides fighting by my side, protecting and watching my back, you were also the best friends I could ask for. Victor Kane is trapped in his obelisk prison. If we want to hurt him, we'll have to free him first, and these bodies littering the floor tell me we're not the first with crazy ideas. <laughs> Today will be a historic day for the multiverse. An ancient prisoner will die or be free. An exile will walk the material plane once again, or his body will litter the astral plane for all eternity. It all comes to you, the once insignificant boy from Elster. Whatever happens, your name will be written in history books. It's up to you if it will be curses or heroic words. Hmm. Oh, there's something right there. Undead General of Victicane. Yep, there's a lot of bodies laying here. Oh, there's another one over here. Hmm. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buff up because this is most definitely going to be a fight here. And we are running up on time, but so I guess I'll do this all off camera. We got to check these bodies and stuff too. I'll do that in the next episode. We'll see you then, ladies and gentlemen.